Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time to take global stories making headlines in our national dailies. And someone who's supposed to be joining me to review the papers is um, uh, G.D.A. Jensen. He's a chief lecturer at Nigerian Institute of Journalism. Uh, but he's quite under the weather, so he can't be. He would not be able to join us this morning. But we wish him a quick recovery, and um, we hope he's fine soon, and he'll be able to join us next week. So with that being said, I will be reviewing the papers by myself today. And today we'll be starting with the punch. Now, the punch leads with Tinubu O.K.'s payment of 3.3 trillion power sector debts. Now, um, in a way to curb the incessant power outage, well, President Bola Tinubu has okayed the payment of 3.3 trillion Naira power sector debts. Now, this is supposed to be like a gradual um, a payment and about 1.3 trillion Naira is owed um, to the power generating companies by the federal government, but that will be paid in cash injections and promissory notes now, while another 1.3 billion um, and 1.994 trillion using the current official closing rates owed to gas companies will be paid via cash and future royalties. Um, so, well, this is a good news. And I hope that, you know, with this, all of the promissory notes and everything that they need to pay, we might start to see um, a good power. I, I wonder what this means for the power sector. I'm sure if there's more money, Obviously, the power sector will be able to generate more power and even distribute it. Um, but aside from paying the debts, I think we need to look into investing into um, proper manuf like infrastructure for the power sector because you're hearing of, um, you know, some some the grid is obsolete. Um, and that's one word that has been thrown around. The grid is obsolete, and that's why we keep seeing the grid collapse um, every now and again. And so. I know the federal government needs to pay this debt to ensure that they tackle the incessant um, outages in the country. But then, uh, how are we funding the power sector? Because it is important that we have, you know, a good energy sector that helps people's businesses, um, manufacturing industries. Everyone needs power. We need power to be able to, um, you know, just even sustain Nigeria's economy at bay first <laughs> do you understand we need that so i think the, the the presidents the federal government as a whole they need to really really look into the power sector and see what they need to do aside paying the 3.3 trillion anara um power sector debts um the writer here even says genco's gas producers to get 1.3 Three trillion naira, one point three billion dollars via cash, promissory notes, and royalties. Um, so yes, let's just see what happens with that. I hope that um, the federal government is able to do this, and then we just have a better power sector. Another story on the punch this morning talks about federal government labor to negotiate forty-eight thousand naira proposal on Tuesday. Now. This is what it says on the punch, but if you move over to the Guardian, um, it leads that NLC TUC boycott negotiations as federal government promises to shift ground. So we're seeing two stories. Um, we know that there is supposed to be a negotiation, but we don't know where um, labor and um, that's the NLC and the TUC. Um, we don't know where they actually stand right now. I know that 48,000 naira, it just seems like a slap in the face. It's, it seems like really <laughs> what are we supposed to do with all of that when we're thinking of the hyperinflation in the country that has skyrocketed to a very high number and so do you think that forty-eight thousand naira is the actual minimum wage that people ex would need to live and um i mean this is just a very good question would forty-eight thousand naira what would forty-eight thousand naira be able to um, afford for a family of three or even four right now how can you live on that in one month? Is that something that is substantial enough for a family to live on? So I'm sure um, labor just feels some type of way that while we're having this conversation, we're asking for 615,000 Naira. Labor is asking for 615,000 Naira. And how do you come to the table with 48,000 Naira? So an increase of about 35 percent, 25 to 35 percent. In fact, that's what the federal government um, has said. But I think that the federal government needs to do better with, you know, their offer for one. And labor still needs to sit down on the table because if you're not negotiating, 
the what are you doing you can get angry and say you know what um we're not going to have a meeting or anything whatsoever but then uh, the lives of nigerians are hanging on this so it is important that you still show up for that meeting um with labor having to boycott the negotiations um well i don't know what that's gonna i don't know what's gonna happen with that but we hope that they just sit down come to the table with you know proper offer a good negotiation and something that is okay for nigerians because nigerians are suffering we're plunging down into the poverty line a lot of people cannot afford anything at the moment because they're not making money there is no job right and even the job that you have before you pay your transportation to get to the to your place of work all of that money is gone how do you get to put food on your table how do you get to put clothes on your back how do you get to you know just feed your family as a whole how do you get to pay for your rent for shelter and these are basic amenities that we all need as humans and so the federal government needs to they need to plug into the humanity side of things and think is this okay for someone is this okay for a family of three or four to leave because if 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 the father is working maybe the mother isn't is that okay for them to leave even if both of them are working that is less than a hundred thousand naira. how much is a bag of rice at the moment these are questions to ask i think the people who are making certain policies they need to do market sample market survey go to the market see what things are right now the prices of goods and services see what they are i mean we all know how much you know band a customers have to pay now you have to pay for electricity you have to pay for your your maybe having to pay your rent that's if you do not own a home right now and do you think someone who earns about forty-eight thousand naira would have gotten a home we don't even have good mortgage systems in nigeria so are you going to be thinking about mortgage at the moment not really then you still need to pay transportation if you have kids you still need to pay their fees there's so many things you still need to eat you still need to have certain celebrations you still need to you know invest in something so that amount is a substantial and we expect that you know the federal government would do something about this all right um another one which is something we talked about in our top trending story um talks about the student loan and it says on the guardian it says finally student loan applica applications portal opens may 24. it is also on the punch it says federal government opens student loan portal may 24. Another story on um, the punch, it says, Reps probe Lagos Calabar Coastal Highway. Now, one question I've asked, I'm like, why are the reps probing this right now? There's been a lot of demolition in Lagos. In fact, very close to us, if you walk down, you're seeing the Oniri Beach being sent filled. You're seeing, you know, landmark being, there's so much sand everywhere. It's not the beach you used to know. And I'm wondering, while we demolitions have happened you want to start to probe the lagos calabar coastal highway this should have been done before businesses were being sent out of their premises these are people who rake in millions and billions these are people who give you know job opportunities to a lot thousands of nigerians now those thousands of nigerians are without work first they're without pay I know the federal government has said they're going to, um, you know, compensate all of these businesses or people who are on that stretch. If you have your land there and you're on that stretch, you'll be compensated. As long as you have, you know, the valid documents, you have the title, um, that is okay. But why are we probing this now? So what happens if it goes the other way? Maybe they probe and they say, okay, we can't do this. How about all those people that have invested their blood, sweat, money, tears? what happens so i think this is coming a bit too late too little too, too late in my own opinion um but whatever probing they need to do they need to do it fast and make sure that they are not demolishing other um businesses because i know they are currently at at landmark they finished from oniri they're currently at landmark and they are moving progressing into you know other areas in that stretch so whatever probing needs to be done needs to be done fast so we can know what we're doing in the country because we can't just, you know, be moving blindly. No, we can't be doing that. 
Um, well, another one of the punch talks about politics and is, is it's saying my opponents are defeated. That is by um, Seminala Fubara, the governor of a river state. And he's saying his opponents are defeated. Now, we know a lot of crisis happening in the river state. Um, uh, Fubara is at loggerheads with um, uh, Yensom Wike, who's the FCT minister, and who um, was the governor of River State. So there's a bit of a clash. There are, you know, um, members of the House of Assembly who have deflected from the party. There's just a lot happening. But Fubara is being confident and he's saying his opponents are defeated. In fact, we've also heard that he has decided to probe into Wike's administration while he was the governor then. So there's a lot that's happening in. Um, in River State, in fact, I would make a joke and say this is Nollywood. So we're get, getting scene one or part one, part two. And we just keep hearing different things every day. And we're looking at how the story progresses. My, my own fear is that the, rivers, the people of River State might be the ones affected. And in fact, I used a, a popular African proverb the other day. I think that was on Monday when we were talking about this. And I said, when two elephants fight, what happens? The, the grass suffers. And so this might you know, have an, an adverse effect on the people of River State because two elephants are trying to fight with the grass, the people of River State. So it's important that they you know, just come to terms. I know that there's been a peace pact that happened last year. But I'm just wondering what happened to that peace pact. Why can't they both just come and say, okay, we're going to bury the, ha the hatchet and look for how to maybe not, you know, be chummy and friends uh, per se, but at least be civil to one another. And because we know that, you know, we have a goal. We have the, our goal is to ensure that the people of River State are fine and River State is progressing. River State, you know, we, ha we ha have a sustainable economy. But when you're being swayed by so many stories and so many things, someone is talking here, someone is talking there, those are distractions. Those are distractions for the people of River State. And so we need the, 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 the government of River State to put their house in order. That's just what is necessary for those people and then even Nigeria uh, as a whole. All right, so another story here, it talks about 36 assembly speakers back state police. So that's another one here on, on the punch. And I mean, we talked about state police a couple of times here on the breakfast. And it just, I, I think I'm a bit, I, I, I like the idea. Let me just put it that way. I like the idea of a state police because with the state police, they understand the terrain. They understand the nooks and crannies. They understand the area that, you know, they are securing. And when you hear cases of, you know, people in uh, some villages and the terrorists just come attack them, if there were state police, because there are people manning at that station, it's, it's easier for them to say, no, we're going to secure this place. But when you have to get your, um, your directive from, from the center and before it trickles down the information, it's, it, at the end of the day, we need to understand that Nigeria has its peculiarities. Right. Let me let me say this here. Nigeria has its peculiarities. And if you're looking for ways to govern Nigeria, you need to look at those peculiarities. Now, with the state police being, you know, being put out there and then there are like bills and all of that for that. Um, if, we're, if we're saying that we really want to secure the lives and properties of Nigerians, then we really need to look at the state police, you know, bill in depth. In the United States, for instance, they have so many um, state police. You have the LAPD, you have the NYPD, you have all of that. It's just the same thing that we need to replicate, replicate here in Nigeria and say, okay, the Lagos State Police. I'm not saying, you know, kill the center or, um, uh, you know, remove power totally from the center. They can still report back, but at least just decentralize that force and I think that would really really help us because at the end of the day um, the primary um, you know concern for the, the federal government is to ensure that the lives and properties of Nigerians are safe we don't want a situation whereby people are just moving um, and they don't feel safe Thank you for staying with us. We sincerely apologize for the technical glitches. But moving on to our stories, well, um, uh, if we move over to The Guardian, it talks about abandoned projects dot southwest amid push of scarce resources 
um, to new ones. So abandoned projects, that's something that we always hear about in Nigeria, like so many abandoned projects. Why are we um, starting in projects that we cannot finish and you just abandon them and move over to another one? So if we're saying that we have scarce resources, then know what you're doing. You cannot just be using public funds because now it seems like wastage. We're starting something, we don't finish it, we move over to another one. We start that, we don't finish it, move over to another one. Why? Why can't you just put all the resources together and say, you know what, this is the project we're doing right now. Let's finish that. The moment we you know, commission that project, it's all done, we move over to another one. But we can't just be throwing our monies all around. It's almost like just scattering things everywhere and it's 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 littering the entire place it's wasting the resources that we have because the goal obviously is not to start it and stop it the goal is to start it finish it commission it and utilize it so if we're not if there's no utilization of this project then what are we doing we can't have abandoned projects you know just littered all around um, Nigeria or the South. Well, right now it says the Southwest amidst push of scarce resources to new ones. So let's finish the ones that we have and then we can move over to another one. Another story here on The Guardian talks about rising cost of drugs worsen, um, worsen steep rise in hypertension cases, rising cost of drugs worsen, so steep rise in hypertension cases. Now, Nigeria can happen to everybody or Nigeria is happening to everybody because when you think of inflation, when you think of everything that you have to deal with, it's understandable to have hypertension cases. And if we're seeing this rising cost of drugs, um, you know, steep rise in hypertension cases, it's understandable because you're not resting well. You're thinking too much. How can I, you know, fend for myself? How can I fend for my family? But guess what? Even with all of those hypertension cases, there's still the rising cost in drugs so having to get medication is quite expensive now and, I'm, and i know that on this show we've also you know touched on um traditional medicine but most how many people really go for that most times you want to go for um medicine that you know has been approved by the nafdac you want something that you know that a lot of research has been conducted um and you're not just take ingesting things in that you know might be harmful to you so Rising cost worsens. I'm wondering what the government, you know, is doing about this. And I'm sure this, you know, has some form of, um, you know, some form of stuff like happening, especially with the FX, right? So if we're seeing the FX, you know, increasing, obviously other things, because most of the things that we have, you know, is being, is being imported. Um, and so let's just see what the federal government is doing about that. I'm just going to take a few ones from the business NG. The business NG leads with federal government offers 12 new oil blocks to investors. I wonder what this means. I hope that we're getting, you know, good investors coming in. We're getting more revenue as a, as a nation. And then this would just help thrive our economy. So if that's happening, I love it. And I hope we just get to see Nigeria that is working and in Nigeria that is flourishing. Um, another one here is, talks about the NLC TUC threatening to shut down dams over electricity tariff hike. Hmm. If they shut down the dams, that means we probably would not have any, any power, right? And so, please, we do not want that. We want them to be able to, you know, talk about this, negotiate, um, you know, what can be done, because at the end of the day, you still need to think about the Nigerian people and, you know, how they're faring. So shutting down the dams might not be the right way to go, but having a conversation about this and, you know, seeing what's, what is sustainable for everyone, then that should be it. Um, so, all right, I think that is all on our papers today, on the paper review today. We'll go on a short break, and when we return, we'll be looking at our first hot topic. Please stay with us.